the Universal Belay Standard, presented by the American Alpine Club and Adidas Outdoor. Belaying a leader is an involved and nuanced process that is only learned through repetition. Excellent instruction is also required to avoid mishaps and to get things right from the start. The system is basic by design, so anyone skilled at belaying a leader becomes fluent in the key techniques. These include positioning the blade to avoid a clash of bodies, consciously managing the slack, too little and the leader fights rope drag, too much and every fall grows longer, securing a leader who's resting on the rope, Arresting falls with a solid yet soft catch, or stopping a leader cold if obstacles are in the fall line, and hoisting a falling leader back to their high point as needed. These are some of the basics, but know going in that skilled lead belaying involves a slew of subtle methods and the ability to perform them on demand, according to the lead climber's immediate and changing needs. Before giving a lead belay, determine the fall line and the direction of pull coming off the first protection point. Stand close to the wall and directly below that first clip, then take one step left or right. If the belayer had been standing directly under that first clip, the leader would have fallen on her head. This happens. Once you determine where to stand, stack the rope in a neat pile on your break hand side, close by your feet. Tangled lines are a nuisance. A snarl can jam in your blade device and stall the leader at the hard part. Not good. Tie a knot in the opposite end of the rope and position the knot so others can clearly see it. Then hand the top or business end of the rope to the lead climber and rig your belay device. Lastly, double check each other's systems. Are the harnesses secure? Do the knots look good? Is the blade device correctly rigged with the carabiner locked? Is the blade in a safe spot? Then it's game on, and you run through the command ritual. On belay, Chelsea. Belay on, John. Climbing, Chelsea. Climb on, John. Many climbers prefer an ABD, or assisted belay device, over a passive tube unit. ABDs use mechanical camming action to clamp the rope and require precise, fine motor skills to use correctly or at all. Once the blaze system is live, you typically pay out arm lengths of slack as the leader climbs. When the leader climbs fast, bursting through a crux, say, you need to anticipate and quickly pay out slack, basically multitasking with individual fingers. Here's how it works. First and foremost, keep all four fingers wrapped around the rope. The fingers and palm comprise your brake hand. Then your forefinger hooks underneath the rolled edge here using discrete tension to keep the device and the carabiner safely aligned. This greatly decreases the chance of horizontal loading on the carabiner. Last but not least, your thumb pushes down on the braking cam, and careful not to push on the black swivel here. Rather, push down on the metal. You're trying to interfere with the cam's range of motion. When combining these techniques, you can pay out slack quickly and smoothly, always keeping your brake hand in the rope. When using a standard tube device and feeding slack to the leader, keep sliding that brake hand down. This is simpler to perform than when using an ABD, but not quite as fast, and you don't enjoy the backup of an auto-locking action. Skilled lead belaying involves both giving and taking rope in a dynamic process called compensating. When a leader makes a long clip, the rope will run above his head in what is basically a three-foot top rope. To limit needless slack, the blayer first pays out rope for the high clip, takes in slack after the leader clips in the lead rope, then seamlessly pays slack again as the leader climbs on. What the leader dreads most is the rope coming tight as he reaches for the high clip, which can trigger a fall with six feet of slack in the system. So toggling the rope just so is a team effort requiring belayer vigilance, timing, and practice. Larger scale compensating happens when the leader down climbs from a clip to a rest lower down on the pitch, then climbs back to the high point. The crucial concern when catching a fall is to stop a leader from hitting the ground or a ledge. When the leader is climbing an overhang, she can only fall into empty space or to the ground. 
when the leader is well up the pitch, with sound protection nearby and an experienced belayer below, hitting the ground is unlikely. Here, it's often best to ride the belay, letting your body absorb some impact force by giving a little to the direction of pull. This provides a soft catch. When trying to limit the distance of a leader fall, if a ledge or obstacle is in striking range, say, brace and fight the impact force, locking her off short and hard by standing solid as a statue, giving no ground. Sometimes you can reel in some slack, then fight. When to ride and when to fight are judgment calls learned through experience. But if you know the concepts going in, you have a head start. An experienced lead climber can more easily learn these skills because they know the feel and applied demands of a good belay. A non-climber can also become an expert lead belayer, but their learning curve is normally steeper. Fatigue, a bungled sequence, or when simply not feeling it, these are times when a leader needs to rest on the belay, and they don't want to slide down the rope. Whenever the leader yells tension or take, tension. a universal belay standard becomes an active process. First, the belayer swiftly reaches up high on the lead rope above the belay device, reels in any slack, and then hops simultaneously locking off the line. As the leader's weight comes onto the rope, the belayer literally sits on the belay thanks to the tension line in their harness. Pull, hop, take, and sit. All are done in a split second. A last technique, common to overhanging sport climbs, occurs when the leader falls but doesn't want to lower to the ground and instead wants to regain the last clip. Problem is he's hanging in midair. Time for the hoist. The rope is already under full tension, so the belayer gets up on their toes. Then the leader grabs a rope above, pulls up, and lets go. For a split second, the leader is weightless. The rope goes slack and the belayer naturally sinks as their counterweight sucks in the slack. The hoist will fail unless the blayer keeps the rope locked off and can reel in a fully tensioned rope as he stands back up. This last phase takes some wrangling and is more easily viewed than described. Repeat till the leader is hoisted to the high point. Efficient hoisting requires anticipation, timing, and practice. And the more the leader outweighs the belayer, the harder the hoist. Lead belaying is complicated and dynamic and takes time and patience to master. But no matter what, all universal standard belays must conform to our fundamental principles. Let's watch the process play out in live action. Notice that no matter the task, the brake hand never leaves the rope. And whenever the belayer's hand slides on the rope, it's always in the braking position. Lastly, note how the belayer's hands and body naturally shift around as he or she pays out slack, catches falls, compensates, takes, and hoists. That is the universal belay standard.